Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone, this video is going to focus on modern materials and specifically the chapter 12 in your revision guide, which is uh, modern materials and the properties of those materials. So what do we need to know about? Weirdly, there's only four. It's quite a strange mixture. Um, so we have Kevlar, we have something called precious metal clay, which is quite easy to explain. We have high density modeling foam, which is basically just a much denser version of styrofoam. And then we have polymorph, which a lot of you will know. Um, we have it in school. And I'm gonna go through each of these, give you some uses. There's a couple of videos, um, so you understand what the materials are. Um, and just a fair warning, uh, one of these came up last year. I think it was high density modeling foam came up in one of the questions and it really tripped people up because they hadn't looked at these materials. So the first material we're gonna have a look at, a lot of you will know, uh, it's called Kevlar. Um, it is a very, very strong, um, heat resistant synthetic fiber. So um, it's related to quite a few other materials, uh, other things like uh, Nomex, which is a very fire resistant uh, material, which is commonly used in um, like the fire service, their, their uniforms, as well as like F1 uh, driver's suits and things like that. So I'm gonna show you a video which comes from the uh, people that own the, the, the trademark for Kevlar. It's a company called DuPont, which you may have heard of before, a massive company. And um, another cool fact, Kevlar was actually discovered by um, a woman, which is pretty cool, uh, working in uh, the textiles industry, I believe, and realized the advantage of using these fibers and the way that they were woven to create this really strong synthetic uh, material. So here's the video. When you look down on your home planet from space, it's mind boggling. Just so staggeringly beautiful. Being out space is really the most foreboding, incredibly hostile environment. We can't go into an environment as challenging as that with any doubts. Is my spacesuit going to protect me today? Without the presence of Kevlar, I think it would be terrifying. From 34 million miles above us to several miles below us, and every point in between, you're gonna find DuPont Kevlar. Kevlar is pushing the limits on lightweight, fuel-efficient planes. Kevlar helps us explore the frontiers of our capabilities. Kevlar allows us to do these things that haven't been possible before. Why is it so bad, you know? We provide the first responders with the capability so they can bring people home. Kevlar has been around for a long time, and you still see it in cutting edge technologies. We can actually design properties into the material and create something new which doesn't exist before. There's also this element of discovery in places that hadn't realized the benefits that Kevlar can bring to them. La cinta Kevlar lo que busca es durabilidad, resistencia, por ende, eh, mayor seguridad hacia las personas. Uno tiene que tener control sobre los riesgos. There's many applications that can benefit from Kevlar, and it's limitless depending on what the imagination is of the people who have the needs. Is there life out there? Is one of the most profound human questions. Kevlar allows us to push our limits, to seek those answers to the questions that we have. The stuff travels. <laughs> travels well. Okay, so hopefully you're back. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different properties of Kevlar, what it's used for. So aramid fibers, that's what Kevlar is basically, is short for aromatic polyamide, which is quite weird. But it's basically uh, a heat, it's a, it's a class of heat resistant synthetic fibers. So these can be woven just like any other fiber. Um, this gives really high performance um, characteristics. It can be kept like a woven fabric and used in things like body armor and gloves and all sorts of things. 
Um, but it can also be set like a composite, like carbon fiber or like um, fiberglass with epoxy resin or polyester resin. So it has lots of different properties. Um, so let's talk about the different properties it's got. It's got a very low stretch, which you can imagine is uh, a benefit in uh, a lot of different applications. Um, it's completely cut proof as well. Um, so that's why it's used for things like protective gloves. Um, it's used in puncture resistant bicycle tires and car tires. It has a very high tensile strength. So being pulled apart, it's going to have a lot of strength in that direction. So being kind of pulled in that direction. It has a very, as you can imagine, a very high strength to weight ratio. It's a very light fibre, but once it is woven in a particular pattern, it's extremely strong. Just a reminder that strength means that it, it will resist stretching or um, deforming. It's very, very strong. It's got excellent fatigue resistance. Remember, fatigue resistance is, is something being like uh, bent back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's not going to fracture. Um, polypropylene has really good fatigue resistance. Bit of a link there that they're both uh, polymers. But um, yeah, that's a really good uh, property, obviously, for this application. It's got really good performance over a really wide range of different temperatures. Um, which makes it really, really useful uh, for things like aerospace, which it's used in a lot because obviously temperatures are going to be either extremely high or extremely low and it performs well at lots of different temperatures. It does not melt. It will start to decompose at very high temperatures of 800 or 900 Fahrenheit, but it does not melt. So um, that obviously gives it a lot of benefits in, in high temperature applications. Uh, low creep. So creep basically means um, that when it's uh, heated, it doesn't kind of get bigger or smaller. Um, so low creep, no shrinkage means it's got really good thermal um, kind of properties in the way that it kind of doesn't change shape. That's a big advantage. It also has really good chemical stability, so it can come in contact with lots of different types of chemicals and it's not going to be affected. And last but not least, it's highly abrasion resistant, which links in with it being cut proof, bulletproof to a certain extent. Um, so it's used in lots of different applications. So some of the uses, again, just to reiterate, body armor, cut proof gloves and aprons, aerospace, like on the video, the guy's a bit of a cheesy video, but he's talking about it being used in a spacesuit and puncture resistant tires. So in the walls of this, uh, tire obviously rubber on the outside but then it's got a uh, around the inner tube a coating of uh, Kevlar or a, a Kevlar uh, kind of structure okay that's Kevlar right the next one you need to know about is called precious metal clay it's a funny little material uh, it's basically looks like it looks like normal clay that you might buy in like a hobby shop but the thing that's a little bit different about it is that uh, it's made up of actually like fine metal particles. So it could be gold, it could be silver, it could be bronze. There's loads of different metals it could be. But those metal particles are mixed in with the clay and the clay is used as like a binder to combine the metal particles together. So basically what you can do with this clay is you can mould it and shape it and form it just like you would if you were using a normal type of clay. You can push it into moulds like the ones over here. Um, you can roll it out, you can cut into it, um, you can create patterns and textures. And once you're done, it sort of dries. Um, and then what you can do is you can fire it, which is basically putting it in a kiln, which is like an oven. Or you can heat it with a torch, which is what happens on the video that I'm going to show you in a second. The actual clay bit, the binder, burns away and the metal particles, they like fuse together and turn into a solid metal product. So these are silver that you can see here, and that's what's left after it's heated. So you can see it gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of artistic freedom um, to make something quite unique and original without having to make a mold to pour metal into. So quite good for people that make uh, small amounts of jewelry 
um, for kind of ind independent shops and um, designer makers, because in industry, you might use another process. You might use investment casting but that product would need to be made on a larger scale. So this is quite a good alternative for people that are just sort of making small amounts of one-offs or batch production of jewelry. So here's the video. It's a bit of a weird video. It's been cut a bit weirdly, but it shows you how, what the material looks like and how it's heated to create the shape at the end. Right, the next material I'm going to talk about, and this is the one that came up in an exam question last year. So it's unlikely to come up again, but definitely worth uh, keeping in mind. This is very similar to styrofoam. Um, so it's not the same, but it's, a, it's basically just a denser version of styrofoam. So it's very, very high density um, and it's polyurethane. So it's a type of polymer. Um, looks a little bit like this, so you can already see it. It's very, very dense. Whereas with styrofoam, um, you can you can't necessarily see the air that's been pumped inside to it, but it's it's a lot denser. It's still very lightweight. It's very easy to work using hand tools. You can sand it. You can cut into it with saws. But a massive advantage is it can be cut or formed using CNC tools such as routers and milling machines. So here's a quick, quite satisfying little video showing how that happens. Right. So sorry about the noise in that video, but it shows you how um, the, the quality of finish that can be achieved when you use CNC tools with this material. 
So you can see it's going to be massively um, useful for um, really high quality uh, prototypes. That's what this is for. It's for really high quality prototypes. And you can see that here. The, the quality of the finish that you're able to achieve, you could present that to a client and they would get a really good idea of the form and the, um, you know, the, the overall sort of finish on the product. So a high quality finish can be achieved and also you're able to get intricate shapes and forms. So for example, the little wheel on this car here, if you tried to make that from styrofoam, it's likely that these small details might break, but because this is so dense, um, you're able to achieve those forms. Right, last but not least, it's good old polymorph. So you may have used this in, in school, you may have used it in your project. It's basically a thermoplastic, um, but the big advantage is it uh, becomes moldable, almost like a putty, um, at 60 degrees, which is really, really low. So you can actually heat it up in hot water, just from the kettle, or even by a hairdryer. When it's heated, it goes kind of clear and then you can just shape it in your hand. It's really easy. It's not too hot to handle. And once you've got it into whatever shape you want it to be, so for example, the handle on this toothbrush, it will then solidify at room temperature and it will go a kind of solid white color and it goes really, really hard. So the reason to use this product, because you don't actually get a very good surface finish from this material, but what you do get is the advantage of being able to make custom products such as ergonomic grips. So, for example, on this spoon, this could be for um, an, maybe an elderly person or someone who's got a disability in their hands, making it easier for them to hold. Um, I've seen it used before in medical splints. So when someone broke their finger once, the doctor actually created a polymorph splint to put on their finger to keep it in the correct position. And that was able to be made specifically for that uh, patient. Um, and other kind of useful uh, products that are used or are made from polymorph are uh, molds for vacuum forming, quite easy to heat up and shape. And also you can prototype quite well with it. So things like mechanical parts, you could prototype them quite quickly and easily with polymorph rather than having to 3D print or injection mold, which can take a little bit longer. So polymorph, dead easy, but is counted as a modern material. Right. Hope that was useful. See you on the next video.